So today I will be telling you about gas pressure and temperature. So when you have a gas, um, you have all these particles in a place, in a container. Now these gas particles or their molecules, they collide with the wall of the container and when they do that, they exert a force on the wall of the container. Okay? Now the total force that is exerted by all of the particles or molecules, if you want to say, inside a container on a unit area of the wall is called the gas pressure. This is because pressure is force over area, so F over A, Newtons, force comes in Newtons, area in meters squared, so the pressure is in Newtons per meter squared, or then Pascal. So, if each particle applies a force over a certain amount of area as they hit the wall, so that surface area where they hit the wall, then they are making a pressure. Now, changing the temperature of a gas held at a constant volume changes the pressure that is exerted by the gas and this is known as the pressure law. So if I increase the temperature, I increase the pressure. If I decrease the, pr the temperature, I decrease the pressure. All of that if the volume is constant, okay? And again, this is called the pressure law. So how does that work? So the molecules of a gas, they move randomly, okay? And in a sealed container, they exert a force when they collide with the container walls and this applies a pressure to the container wall since the force is applied in a certain area and pressure equals force over area. So this part we already know. And if you're learning this for an exam or test, make sure you know this part really well because this is very common to come in tests or exams or assessments, okay? Now, the force and the pressure uh, is equal throughout the container. So we can say that more or less all the particles are hitting the container or the same number of particles are hitting the container throughout the area, uh, the surface area of the whole container. So the force and the pressure is the same all around the container. Now, if you heat up the gas, so uh, when gases in containers are heated, the molecules, their particles gain kinetic energy and therefore they increase in average speeds. Kinetic energy is related with the speeds and we know that the formula for kinetic energy is one half times the mass times velocity squared. So if I increase kinetic energy, the mass of the particles is the same, velocity needs to increase, okay? So this means that they exert a greater force when they collide with the container walls and also collide with the walls more frequently because if they are moving faster, not only when they hit the container wall, they hit it with a greater force and therefore increasing the pressure because you have the upper part of this um, division higher up now, so it's a larger number, therefore pressure increases. They also collide more frequently because again, they are moving faster, so more collisions will happen. So that means that you have more Fs over areas happening, so therefore more pressure, okay? So a gas is therefore under uh, uh, greater pressure when the temperature is higher and this has applications. If you have a fire near sealed gas cylinders, these are extremely dangerous because if the cylinders heats up enough, the pressure will increase and it will explode. Things explode if the pressure inside them is larger than the pressure outside in the surroundings and things implode if the opposite happens. So if the pressure outside in the surroundings is larger than the pressure inside. If the pressure is more or less the same inside and outside, the container keeps with the same pressure, so keeps the same size, so it doesn't implode or explode, okay? So again, this part is very, very important. Make sure you know this well, okay? So let's do this exercise. Pause the video now before I give you the answers. Uh, you have a full text, you have some words you can use, try to get them in the right place to explain why a balloon pops. And I'm going to give you the answers now, so pause the video if you want to do it first. So as the balloon is pumped, the volume increases because more gas particles are put in. As the particles move around, they hit the wall of the balloon, which applies a pressure. The balloon eventually pops because the force exerted by the particles over a specific area becomes greater than the pressure outside the balloon. So this is an example and an exercise on why something pops or explodes. Pressure outside greater than the pressure, sorry, pressure inside greater than the pressure in the surroundings, it will try to come out of it so it explodes. 
you can see the opposite happening. There is a demo that you can do in classes if they still allow us to do because they change it every so often where you can crash a con just by using a uh, heat and water okay so if you cannot see it or if you in your school they cannot do it that's the video i'll put in the description of, uh, so i'll put the link in the description and as you watch the video think about the following why doesn't the can not implode or explode before heating up what happens to the water inside the can as the can is heated up what does this do to the pressure inside the can when they heat up the water inside the can. What happens when the can is placed on the surface of the water, cold water in there? And why does this cause the, co the can to implode? So these are questions for you to think about as the video is running, okay? And again, this is the video. They will explain as well. However, I have here a full explanation if you want to take marks, uh, take marks, take notes. So number one, the can does not implode or explode because the pressure outside the can is equal to the pressure from the air and water inside the can. So if the pressure is the same, nothing happens. Then when the hot water is heated, it changes the state from liquid to a gas. In doing so, the water vapor gains kinetic energy and has more frequent collisions with the walls of the container. So the pressure builds up, increases a little bit more, okay? Now, the more frequent collisions increase the pressure on the container, and because more water particles are colliding with the wall, uh, water vapor particles are colliding with the wall, exerting the force over the same area. Then, when you put the can in the water, cold water, it creates a vacuum. This is because um, you suddenly get less pressure, so these gas particles are going to get closer together so there are spaces where there are no gas particles anymore because you know the place where they were using is not being used anymore the the pressure decreased okay so it creates a vacuum and it causes the water uh, particles to condense as the water particles condense the pressure decreases because less water vapor particles are colliding with the container wall meaning less force exerted over the same area so now, number five, the pressure outside the container is greater than the pressure inside the container, causing it to implode. So that is it about pressure and temperature, or temperature and pressure. I will be doing a video on Brownian motion, a separate video on Brownian motion. Up to my next video, be happy and healthy. Bye!